Hello everyone, welcome to our mentoring session on entrepreneurship as part of the Unify Festival's Recreate competition. My name's Faye Halliwell, I'm responsible for coordinating student and graduate entrepreneurship programmes at the University of Bradford. In today's session, we'll talk to you about what entrepreneurship is, key points to consider when writing your business plan for the Recreate competition, and examples of entrepreneurship in Bradford and beyond. I'm delighted to welcome our four panel members today. Before we start, could I ask each of you to introduce yourselves, please? And we'll start with Sonia. Hi, and uh, welcome everybody. I'm Sonia Bakra Byrne, co-founder and creative director of AVI, a luxury slow fashion brand based in Yorkshire. Thank you. Ifeanyi? Hi, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Ifeanyi Chiku. I'm a graduate student in um, School of Management at University of Bradford. I also uh, belong to the entrepreneurship, accelerated entrepreneurship student program at the University of Bradford. Nice to meet you all. Thank you very much. And Sankar, we'll come to you next. Hi, welcome everyone. So my name is Sankar Savraja. I'm also the head of School of Management at the University of Bradford. I'm also a professor of technology management and circular economy. So a pleasure to be here, part of the panel. Thank you very much. And finally, Paul. Hi everyone, Paul Thorning, Professor of Innovation at the University of Bradford, responsible for student and uh, graduate uh, entrepreneurship and attracting talent to our city uh, as well. Um, I also run uh, a company in Bradford, uh, a pharmaceutical technology company called Christec. Thank you very much, Paul. So I think we'll start off this afternoon by asking each of you what entrepreneurship means to you, just in a sentence or two. And I'll start first of all with Sonia, please. Entrepreneurship means to me innovation, creativity, and having a positive impact on society. Thank you. If we knew, what would you say? All right. So for me, entrepreneurship um, means giving, using businesses to um, do well and do good, to contribute to improving life on earth through whichever activities that you are doing. Thank you very much. Sankar, what would you say entrepreneurship means to you? Thank you, Fair. I think entrepreneurship for me means really someone who creates and builds an idea and is able to run it and sustain it and don't give up. I think I think uh, having the risk taking ability to really sustain a business idea is entrepreneurship to me personally. Thank you. And finally, Paul, what would you say entrepreneurship is to you? I think first and foremost, for me, it's, it's about overcoming a fear of failure, realizing that at the end of the day, the worst thing that can happen isn't actually that bad. Having a passion, having a dream, and having the courage to pursue it. Um, and if things don't work out, then having the courage to pick yourself up and try again. Thank you, Paul. I think between us, we've hit the nail on the head there. And I'm certainly a big believer in if you don't try, you'll never know. So certainly want to encourage everybody who's thinking about entering the Recreate competition as well to put their entry forward. Um, Sonia, you're a local entrepreneur running a successful business. Please, could you tell us a little bit more about Avi and your entrepreneurial journey so far? Avi is uh, a women's wear brand focusing on luxury slow fashion, making eco-friendly, sustainable life pieces. So high quality pieces that will create less waste and have a positive impact on the environment, but also that transcend seasons. So. We started the journey um, many years ago when I first started working in New York and we had this concept idea of how can we have a capsule collection that is interchangeable but also seasonless and have, have it made from sustainable materials. And because I've worked all over the world, we've added different cultural layers to it. Um, and eventually when we left Australia, Two years ago we came back to Yorkshire after eight, being away for 18 years and we launched Avi in 2019 which was amazing and we had a fantastic first year pre-Covid. <laughs> we had amazing um, reception, um, reception from the industry, um, lots of awards and it really helped us kind of launch um, our kind of 10-year vision as well into the future um, and also it made us realize what it means to be an entrepreneur. I think one of the important things was things don't always go to plan and that could be a good thing and a bad thing. And as Paul said, you know, it's, it really is a mindset thing. It, it really is 
pick yourself up. You are going to have those moments where you doubt yourself. You are going to have those moments where you need to pick yourself up, um, allow yourself to have them, but then, you know, don't wallow in it too much. Get up, you know, what's the next plan? What's the next goal? And keep moving forward. Thank you. It sounds like you've had a great journey so far across plenty of different countries as, as well across the world. And what, what would the key piece of advice be then? If you've not already mentioned it, what would your key piece of advice be for startup entrepreneurs? Um, I think it's vital to know your market, um, you know, have knowledge about the target of the customers uh, that you want to obtain. Um, also know about the industry, who are the leaders, who's up and coming. Um, all that knowledge you know about your market will better armor you or when things don't go well and you can mitigate future risks, but also explore future opportunities as well. Um, you want to put yourself in a position where you are able to be nimble and navigate the landscape as it changes. Um, just because you have a vision, like I said, things change all the time and you just need to basically have that knowledge um, and just keep learning. It, it is an entrepreneur's journey is a journey of learning continuously. So don't think you need to have all the answers because you're not going to have all the answers, but enjoy it, move forward, do it with passion, do it with positivity, and uh, you should do well. Brilliant advice, thank you very much. If Anya, coming on to you now, I know you've got a passion for community and social enterprises. Have you got any tips or suggestions for people wanting to set up a community enterprise in Bradford? Yeah, absolutely, so um, first of all, um, it is a very noble tax to work for the community in a business way. So I would want to congratulate you for um, taking that, thinking towards that path. And also um, what you may want to do is to have a very strong understanding of the problem you want to solve in the community. Um, when you have an in-depth understanding of this problem, in fact, you, you should use the greater percentage of your time to really diagnose this problem. Then when this is understood you should then be able to provide a solution so the second thing you want to do is to um, use your um, personal interest use your personal energy um, it could be because of your love for the city of bradford it could be because you know bradford was where we were born or you know something personal that connects you to this uh, place and then you want you may want to use this energy and interest to find a solution to the problem that you've identified in the first place. So I would want to say that when you combine these two things, you should be able to, um, there are a lot of other things as well, but these two are the basic ones I would want to um, um, recommend. And then you should be able to continue from there and find a solution to the problems um, in Bradford. Thank you. And as a student yourself, Ifianye, how about the student community? Do you think it's possible to be an entrepreneur and study at the same time? Absolutely. I think it's very possible. Um, I think these two things are, personally for me, two sides of the same coin. Um, um, the university should be a brooding place for businesses to, to start from. So, and then um, academics, um, application, or, you know, the, stud the things we study in school and um, the business part is, you know, the application of all these things uh, that is being studied in school. So for me, combining these two things, it's really, really fascinating and interesting learning experience. Uh, I, I get to have strong network from the academic, academic part and also network of those students that are also interested in, in, in business. So um, this network really, really uh, narrows my interest and you know makes me to know the, the people to connect with and speak with at any time in my entrepreneurship journey so um it's, uh, it's very um, lovely and very possible to combine academics and, and business thank you i think you've touched upon there as well a little bit of what sonia was saying about learning at the same time as developing your business so it does fit in with the student community as well as people who maybe aren't studying at the moment and that's the great thing as well about this competition it is open to students as well as people in the wider community in Bradford so you don't necessarily have to be studying to be an entrepreneur and vice versa. Sanka, um, how would you say that entrepreneurship is currently being nurtured and celebrated in Bradford? Thank you Faye, I think uh... Uh, Bradford, if you look at it, it has a very powerful culture of entrepreneurship. Yorkshire region, I think the, the mindset is there to 
create a new business, like you said, it doesn't really need to be grounded with education, but it's the passion and the mindset, the values that you believe in an idea comes from the city in itself. So I think uh, it nurtures and celebrates that a diverse background and the culture that it has to offer. And having a young talent workforce really builds that and nurtures uh, those ideas that they can actually have a positive impact to the society. So I think uh, my first and foremost, the place in itself has a lot of heritage and brings that mindset and powerful culture of entrepreneurship, which is quite needed to nurture good, positive business ideas. And then you have institutions who play a part and role into it. Uh, institutions like the University of Bradford, other uh, small business community, NGOs, really helping that uh, structured programs and um, uh, the uh, opportunities for businesses and student uh, ideas to be really created and nurtured towards that. And I think that's, that's an important place like in terms of having a structured program. And finally, the partnerships and the networks that you really need to nurture those businesses. I think having that access uh, comes in a quite a long way in entrepreneurial journey and having someone to go to and work together in that nurturing the business idea is quite an important thing. So Bradford as a city, I think it provides the place, uh, allows the programs, structured programs, be it institutional, but also the partnerships to work on business ideas and to thrive, I think. Uh, so those are my key take on what Bradford means as a city to nurture business ideas. Thank you, Sankar. And what tips would you have for those of us thinking about enterprise in unused spaces in the city for the competition? First and foremost, I think look at the purpose of what you are really setting out to venture out and looking at what the, uh, the community problems that you might have, possibly think about what Ifani was talking about, what is that passion to really look at what you're trying to solve, the purpose, a purposeful driven passion really needs to come through but also think, rethink your business ideas and look at the current day and age that we live and the business ideas, but don't look at it just purely from what you're looking at today, but have a foresight of what might be needed by consumers, users, and looking at really alternative business models. It's not just about ownership sometimes, it might be about renting spaces. So I, I would say really be agile. And Sonia talked about nimble. I think day in, day out, we know you can have a beautiful business plan for the next five years, but that can go out of your window in the next year. So be adaptable, be agile, be open to learning and having that open mindset is absolutely fundamental. Even if it needs to apply for unused spaces, I think it's just good acumen to really be entrepreneurial mindset, to have that flexibility, open to curious learning and building on those ideas and don't give up. I think you will have ups and downs in the entrepreneurial journey, but don't give up and really look at the creative way you can use unused spaces to have a positive impact on the society. Thank you, Sanka. Paul, could you explain to us what programmes are available to entrepreneurs at the university? Um, thank you, yes. I think one of the things I would just add to Sanka's comments, so there's so much happening in the city. There are so many different organisations that are helping entrepreneurs, whether it's uh, it, through the council or through the Impact Hub, for example, or working with social entrepreneurs. So, you know, as a university, we've got a lot to play with and, and a lot to link to, which makes it really, really uh, good for us. Um, specifically for students, I think the first thing to say is our programs are generally very vocational. So they're run by practitioners uh, and they're run by optometrists, they're run by pharmacists, they're run by peace uh, workers. And, and, and so we, we have a, a wonderful applied and vocational uh, dimension to, to, to our curriculum. Uh, and, and that helps, you know, we are always preparing our students for what comes next, uh, whether that's a job or whether that's uh, working as a, as a, as a founder of, of an enterprise at any level. We also have a fabulous business school with a, a very flexible range of resources, uh, particularly the, the, the distance learning MBA, which really I feel fits in beautifully with, with uh, uh, entrepreneurs' own uh, uh, time constraints, really. Um, Specifically for students, we have a, a student entrepreneurship program, an accelerated program that's designed to, to bring students from different backgrounds together. So you've got the, perhaps the technologists working with the social scientists, working with the, uh, the, the management and, and marketing professionals or the finance professionals. So, so we've got this great program that, that creates a melting pot for generating ideas, 
and also working with existing ideas. So you don't even need to have a great idea to come on the programme. You just need to want to be an entrepreneur. So that's uh, that's had some tremendous successes. And we've seen some really great businesses uh, come out of, of, of this programme. Um, we also have other programmes that are, are, are geared towards um, uh, entrepreneurs coming into, into uh, the university to work with us. Thank you, Paul. Um, I think you may have already covered this point. I was going to ask you how we can further develop the entrepreneurial talent pool of Bradford as a city. So not just as students, but in general. Yeah, I think it's about working together. It's about the partnerships that Sankar mentioned. Um, we're also unique, I think, as a, as a UK university in having the ability to attract talent from anywhere in the world through this uh, startup and innovator visa program. So, so ordinarily people associate uh, bringing entrepreneurs into a country with huge um, investment tickets, you know, needing large sums of money to establish. In Bradford, we can attract somebody with one thousand two hundred pounds in the bank account, uh, enough money to be able to come to the UK with a great idea, establish themselves in this city, which I think is the most fertile ground you can have in this country. Um, and then to be supported by the university and the community to grow the enterprise two years later to have our support for a different type of visa and then three years after that to have our support for settlement so the people out there if, you, if you're working internationally you no know entrepreneurs part of strengthening our city is, is from within and we've got a lot to, to build on but also we're really really keen to bring international talent to our city in order to uh, uh, encourage even further prosperity. Thank you, Paul. And thank you to all of our panel members for your time this afternoon. It's been great to gain a bit more insight into entrepreneurship, your experiences and the support that's on offer in the region to entrepreneurs wanting to start out in Bradford. I, for one, am really excited about this competition. I'm sure the rest of the panel are as well. Um, hopefully the ideas that are put forward through the Recreate competition will really help to enrich our city and hopefully some of them will become a reality in the future. If you've got any questions um, that you'd like to direct towards us, any members of our panel today, or you require any specific support in your application, you can contact us via email at open-innovation at bradford.ac.uk.